<laughs> See, I told you. <laughs> I think Chelsea just did this so she, we'd know how important she is. <laughs> okay, we're good. Okay, we'll start o over again. Good morning, I'd like to call this meeting to order. And uh, I'm just gonna read this first and then we'll go on. Today's meeting is being live streamed and recorded on the Township of Muskoka Lakes website and YouTube channel. By participating in the open public meeting today, you are consenting to your image, voice, and comments being recorded and posted online. And the first uh, resolution, moved by member Grogan Green, second by member Bosworth. Be it resolved that Committee of Adjustment agenda dated September 12, 2022, be adopted. All those in favor? That's carried. And are there any declarations of interest? Seeing none. Okay, we'll adopt the minutes and then we'll let you do your. Moved by Member Quinn, second by Member Queaser. Be it resolved that the minutes dated August the 8th, 2022, be adopted and approved as circulated. All those in favor? That's carried. Okay, Chelsea. Can I get Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. It is, a re it is required that I make a few statements, then I will explain the procedures of the hearing. This electronic hearing is being held in accordance with Section 238 of the Municipal Act 2001 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The members of the Committee of Adjustment present are Chair Alan Edwards, members Joe of adjustment for Bosom staff and planning staff are present. Public input on this September 12, 2022 agenda was invited at the following email address, planning at muskokalakes.ca. It should be noted that motions have been pre-populated with random movers and seconders to expedite the meeting. When it is time to vote, members shall physically raise their hand until the chair has confirmed the vote. If the vote is unclear, a now I will explain the hearing process. The planner will provide an explanation and purpose of the application, the date the notice was circulated, and planning staff's comments. All internal and external submissions were sent to committee members on Friday, September 9, 2022. The planners will also present any submissions received after this date. The committee will then hear from the applicant or the applicant's agent if they wish to add any information or to substantiate their proposal. Please provide your name, mailing address, and postal code for our records. The committee will hear from those in support of the application and those in opposition to the application. Again, please provide your name, mailing address, and postal code for our records. If you are here to speak on an application, please wait to raise your hand in Zoom until the planner presents the relevant application. The committee will then hear from the applicant or the applicant's agent to respond to any questions or concerns raised. The committee will then have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant and or staff. The committee will debate the application and make a decision based on the information presented at the hearing. Please note that the effect of written and oral submissions on decisions of applications for consent and minor variances and the reasons for minor variance decisions as both required under the Planning Act will be pre-populated with standard wording. However, the committee may decide to add reasons and or effects to the standard wording after voting on a decision. It must be noted that the chair has a vote on each application and can participate in the discussion. Additionally, there is a 20-day appeal period from the date of the decision. 
In the case of a minor variance application, a building permit is not available until after the appeal period and no appeals are received. When you present at the hearing, please provide us with your name and mailing address. Presentations are limited to five minutes unless otherwise permitted by the committee. Please note the resolutions are automatically written in the positive to assist in completing decisions as opposed to writing out each resolution. This does not in any way mean the application is going to be approved. Lastly, please take down the pink notice signs that were posted on your property to advertise today's meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Ward. And uh, the first application is B2322 ML Carlson, and that is Rachel Mahoney's going to introduce that for us. Thank you, Chair Edwards. Um, am I coming through okay? Yes, you are. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the next application to be heard is consent application B2322 ML in the name of Carlson, 318 West, Unit 1. I would direct the committee's attention to the submitted consent sketch on page 26 of the agenda package. <clears throat> the purpose and effect of the application is as follows Severance application B2322 ML has been made to grant a right of way over. Oh, we've lost you. Populated to committee prior to today's meeting. Sorry, uh, Rachel, we, we lost you there for a minute. Oh, okay. Am I coming through okay now? Yes, you're, you're fine now. Okay, I don't know where you lost me. You might as well start over just in case. Um, so I'll just start. Okay, I'll start over. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the next application to be heard is consent application B2322ML in the name of Carlson. The subject lot is known as 3014 Muskoka Road, 118 West, Unit 1. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted consent sketch on page 26 of the agenda package, and the purpose and effect of the application is as follows. Severance application B2322ML has been made to grant a right-of-way over part of an existing driveway on property owned by Robert and Andrea Carlson in favor of property owned by Joan Matthews. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 19 days in advance and six submissions have been received to date. The following comments were received and have been circulated uh, to the Township City Chief Building Official, Sandy Boss Township. Again, we're losing you. Comments have been received from Tim Sopity, Boss Township Building, meaning that they have no objection to the application. Comments have been received. Yep, yeah, you're here again. No, okay. Okay. Uh, so Sandy Boss, Township's Building Inspector, Douglas Holland, Township's Fire Prevention Officer, stating that they have no objection to the application. Uh, comments have also been received from Tim Sopkow, the Township's Public Works Technician, stating that the road has not been reviewed by Public Works staff and road access for emergency services may be limited and or unavailable via the proposed road access. Confirma confirmation of a valid entrance permit from the District Municipality of Muskoka is recommended. Comments were also received from Hydro One and the Trillium Lakelands District School Board stating no objection to the application. I'm happy to read any of the submissions in full at the request of committee. Um, staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objection. If committee is considering approval, staff recommend the following conditions. That a registrable description deed of the severed lot right of way be submitted to the secretary treasurer along with a registered copy of the reference plan and that confirmation be received that an entrance permit is available from the district municipality of Muskoka if required. 
staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you for your patience. Thank you very much, Ms. Mulholland. And the applicant uh, is here, I believe. Okay. Yes, Mr. Carlson, would you like to speak? Sorry, we can't hear you, sir. Can you turn your, your speaker on? Uh, Mr. Carlson, can you turn your speaker on? We can't hear you. No, we still can't hear you. How about now? That's it. Fine. Thank you, sir. Um, I really have nothing to say other than the fact that uh, the, spe the specialist lawyers, et cetera, et cetera, have been working quite diligently at this application. And of course, I have no objection whatsoever. The uh, uh, Joan and her family have been using that driveway for 40 some odd years. Um, and I guess obviously they're selling the, they're trying to sell the property and this has to be uh, recorded uh, as a legal right away so that any new owner will have no issue with, with using our driveway uh, into his premises. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Oh, uh, sorry, can you give us your, your name, uh, your full name and address and post a code, please? Sorry? Can you give us your, your name, address, and postal code for our records, please? And my name is Robert Carlson. Uh, my home address is 32-2000, uh, the College Way, Mississauga, Ontario, L5L5Y9. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in support or opposition to this application? No. There's a Melissa. She raised her hand. I don't know her last name. She's in the meeting now. Okay. Can you bring them in? Yeah, she did. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. Okay, so can you turn your your video on? Yes. Sorry about Thank that. You. So my name is Melissa Cope. I'm the solicitor for Mrs. Joan Matthews. My office is located at sixty one Joseph Street, Port Carling, Ontario, P zero B one J zero. I act for Mrs. Matthews, who's receiving the grant of right of way from the Carlsons. And the right of way is over an existing driveway that's currently located on the Carlson property. The Matthews have been using this existing driveway um, for several years and they just wish to formalize the use and are requesting that just as Mr. Carlson has indicated. Um, again, this is the location of an existing right of way and the entrance off um, Highway 118 is existing and no changes are being proposed at this time. And I'm just here to answer any questions. Right, thank you very much, I appreciate that. Other questions from the members? Seeing none, I'll read them, the resolution. Move by Member Bosenworth, second by Member Quinn, be it resolved that consent be granted for application B2322 ML Carlson, provided the following conditions are fulfilled. One, that a registrable description deed of the separate lot right away be submitted to the secretary treasurer along with a registered copy of the reference plan. And two, excuse me, that a confirmation be received that an entrance permit is available on the district municipality of Muskoka if required. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. And that is carried. Thank you very much. The next application is A1922, and that's Ms. Walker. Good morning, Chair Edwards and members of committee. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, we can. Excellent. All right. So the next application to be heard is minor variance application A-19-22 in the name of Van Lero. The subject property is known municipally as 1062 D Wood Drive. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 49 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. 
The applicant proposed to construct a dwelling addition, a sun deck addition, and a detached two-story garage with a sleeping cabin in the upper level. Relief is requested from section 3.4.1E of bylaw 2014-14. Lot of record requirements. Uh, uh, I'm on now. I'm going to go off the phone. In this case, the required frontage is 100 feet. Subject property has 80 feet of frontage. This variance, if granted, will permit the existing dwelling to be enlarged, the existing sun deck to be enlarged, and a new detached two-story garage with a sleeping cabin on the upper story on an undersized lot. Mm -hmm. Relief is also requested from section 4.1.3, 4.1.3.6, and 4.1.3.7, being the maximum permitted total lot coverage and lot coverage within 200 feet of the high water mark. The maximum permitted lot coverage is 8%. The proposed total lot coverage is 8.7%, and the proposed lot coverage within 200 feet of the high water mark is 8.8%. The relief requested is 0.7% and 0.8%, respectively. Relief is also requested from section 4.1.3 being the minimum interior side yard setback. The min minimum permitted side yard setback is 15 feet. The proposed sun deck addition is to be 13 feet from the westerly side lot line. The requested relief is two feet. Notice of this public hearing was circulated 12 days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act and five comments have been received. Comments have been received from Tim Selko, the township's public works technician, Douglas Holland, the Township's Fire Prevention Officer, and Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official. These comments were circulated to committee prior to today's meeting and can be read in full at the request of committee. After comments were circulated, two letters of support were received. The first letter of support is from Egal Gouche, neighboring property owner to the east. The second letter of support is from Ronald William Smithson, neighboring property owner to the west. The submissions are as follows. I have reviewed the notice of public hearing of the application for minor variance for the above property, and I have no objections to the proposal set out therein. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objection subject to the recommended conditions. If committee is considering approval, staff recommend the following conditions. One, that the existing shed be removed as intended, and two, that a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for the implementation of enhanced protection policies from the Muskoka official plan as necessary and the revegetation of the shoreline. I have no further comments, but I'm happy to assist committee with any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Walker. And is the agent or applicant here? Yes, hello. Hello. Hi, my name is George Palantonio. I'm the agent acting on behalf of Karen and John uh, Van Lira, the owners. Okay, sir, go ahead. Uh, okay, so I've, I've read the staff report um, and the staff report has outlined everything um, regarding our uh, variances that we, we are requesting. Um, the coverage um, of the property, the, the, the coverage variance, we've taken a lot of care to make sure that we meet the bylaw. The, the bylaw requires 8%, but the official plan is, is allowing 8.8%. Uh, uh, so we've been very careful to make sure that what we're proposing meets that bylaw. And staff has reviewed it and they seem to be uh, okay with what we're proposing. Um, the, the other variances, which are the frontage and the side yard setbacks, those are existing conditions uh, that uh, you know, we can't meet, we, we can't meet the present requirement that that's why we're here for that variance the um the lot however uh, uh the size of the lot is greater than the required minimum and that seems to be compensating for the fact that we we have 80 feet of uh frontage instead of 100 feet we, we do have enough space on that property to do what we're proposing um we're hoping that the committee will agree that uh, this, this meets all the, the requirements for a minor variance and that uh, what we're proposing is, is a, a good thing for the, for the property and for the owners. Okay, uh, do we get the name and address? No, we, sorry, can we have your, your name, your, uh, your uh, address and postal code, please? Yes, my name, is, 
My name is George Palmotonio. My address is uh, 163 Moore Park Drive in Schaumburg, Ontario. Postal code is L0G1T2. Thank you very much, sir. Sorry, 1T0. Sorry. Okay, did you get that? Okay. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support? Anyone in opposition? Are there questions from the members? Okay. Uh, oh, sure. yes. Uh, there, was some, there was some discussion uh, in the staff report about the space above the garage. And I think we need to clarify that as a committee. Uh, they were concerned that it, uh, it's it been, I think it's uh, on on the plans as a space and hobby, uh, hobby place. Um, it's 508 square feet. This is an undersized lot. There's concern about uh, that could be morphed into a sleeping room which of course puts additional pressure on the septic system. So I think we need to either decide whether that's storage space or uh, if it's living space, ensure that the, uh, uh, well, first come to terms that, that the can take that number of people living on it. And second, ensure that the uh, septic capacity is able to handle that extra bedroom. Okay, now, uh, Mr. Sharp or uh, Ms. Walker, who would like to answer that? Um, I can speak to that, Chair Edwards, and Mr. Sharp can follow up if he has anything to add. I think the staff report was clarifying that any habitable space on a property outside of the main dwelling is considered a sleeping cabin. So even though the applicants are intending to use that space as a craft area, um, in accordance with our bylaw, it would be considered a sleeping cabin for all intents and purposes. And so does that just... Does that mean then that they have to ensure that the septic system can handle it? As That's correct. Okay. Correct. Oops. Okay. Are there any other questions? If I, I could just, if I could just, yeah. uh, I think what um, the planner was going to say was that technic because the way the bylaw is written, technically, you have to say that it's habitable space. Yeah, and so that right. naturally leads to, you know, a place where people would might even have uh, might sleep. But uh, the, the owners are semi retired, but they still work. And Karen uh, likes to do a lot of antique work. And she's, she's getting into sewing and all these kind of things. John still is a contractor and he does a little bit of work, uh, you know, two, three days a week in the area. And this is the space that they thought they could use to do those things. A little bit of storage and a little bit of craft work, uh, especially when you're, you know, you need that space for, for materials and you don't want to feel crowded when you're doing that kind of work. So okay, thank that you. was the reason for the, that second yeah. floor area. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Nobody member Creaser, second by member Green. Be it resolved the application A1922 available to permit the construction of a dwelling addition, a sun deck addition, and a detached two story garage with a sleeping cabin in the upper level is approved, hereby approved by the following variances being granted. One, to permit an enlarged dwelling and sun deck and a new detached garage with a sleeping cabin in the upper level on an undersized lot. Two, to remit the coverage of 2,093 square feet or 8.7% of the area of the entire lot. Three, to remit a lot coverage of 1,592 square feet or 8.8% of the area within 200 feet from the high water mark. And four, to permit a sun deck to be 13 feet from the westerly interior side lot line. These variants are granted on the condition shown on the plan attached and those are, are hereby subject to the following conditions. One, that the existing shed be removed as intended. And two, that a satisfactory site plan be entered into along with securities for implementation of enhanced protection policy of the Muskoka official plan as necessary for revegetation of the shoreline buffer. 
This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That's carried. Okay. And the next one is A3222 Gillen, and that is Mr. Sawyer. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Edward. Good morning, members of the committee, members of the public. Um, it's my understanding that we're having some, uh, some of us are having a little bit of a technical difficulty with our connection. So if I do uh, cut out, please let me know. And um, uh, I'll try to try to go on without uh, video, but I'll, I'll continue right now as is. Um, so the next application to be heard is minor variance application A3222 in the name of Gilgan. And the subject property is frontage on Three Mile Lake and is identified as uh, 1200 Shia Road. Uh, I would direct committee's attention to the submitted sketches starting on page 79 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of this application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to redevelop the property by demolishing a gazebo, a shed, a covered porch, and a one-story garage with an associated carport. And the applicants propose to then construct a two-story dwelling addition. The addition is to be located to the rear of the existing dwelling and over top of the footprint of the existing covered porch and partly over the footprint of the existing one-story garage. In the waterfront residential WR4 zone, the minimum lot requirements for an existing lot of record are a lot frontage of 100 feet and a lot area of 15,000 square feet, feet and a lot area of 20,638 square feet. Although the lot area is greater than the permitted minimum, the lot frontage is deficient by two feet and a variance is therefore requested in order to facilitate the proposed redevelopment. I think we've lost it. I'm not sure if it's uh, if my Yeah, we're just losing you there. So um, were you able to hear what I've said so far? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I'm just going to continue without video because I'm not getting much on my end. So, okay. As long as you can hear me, uh, I'll continue. And then if uh, there's any problems, please let me know. All right. Thanks. So, um, now we're having a problem. So on residential lots that front onto. Th um, are you able to hear me now? No, you're, you're fading um, in and out. On. On residential lots that front onto Three Mile Lake, a maximum lot coverage of 8% is permitted. In this case, the existing buildings and structures have a lot coverage over the entire lot of 8.2% and a lot coverage when calculated within 200 feet of the shoreline of 11.3%. The redevelopment proposal involves a reconfiguration of lot coverage resulting in the same amounts 8.2% over the entire lot and 11.3% within 200 feet of the shoreline and variances are there for. Okay, so I'm being asked to uh, just relocate. I am in the same building, so I'm going to uh, just um, continue my presentation in two minutes here. Sorry about okay. that. Okay, thank you. That's here. Sorry about that. We'll recess for a minute and we'll go here. Yeah, maybe we'll yeah. take a, can we take a quick uh, 10 minutes? Yeah, let's break? take a, let's go on recess. Okay. Well, your last day is going to be memorable anyway. Thank you, Alan. Yeah. I want to mute your uh, oh, yeah.
Okay. Sorry, we've had some technical difficulties and we'll uh, have Mr. Sawyer and I'll go back on just a second. Okay, so are you able to hear me? Perfect. All right, so um, I'll, uh, I'm gonna start again with describing the, uh, the different variances. So on residential lots that front onto Three Mile Lake, a maximum lot coverage of 8% is permitted. In this case, the existing buildings and structures have a lot coverage over the entire lot of 8.2%, and a lot coverage when calculated within 200 feet of the shoreline is 11.3%. Uh, the redevelopment proposal involves a reconfiguration of lot coverage, resulting in the same amount of 8.2% over the entire lot and 11.3% within 200 feet of the shoreline, and variances are therefore requested. Uh, when a hallway that has an exterior that has exterior walls connecting two parts of the building, um, this hallway connection is only permitted to have a maximum length of 16.4 feet. In this case, the proposed hallway that connects the existing dwelling with the addition is to have a length of 18.6 feet and a variance of 2.2 feet is therefore requested. Uh, notice of this public hearing was circulated 10 day days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act and three comments have been received to date. Uh, the Township's Public Works Department, Emergency Services Department and Development Services Division have all submitted comments advising that they do not have any concerns and there have not been any um, comments received from members of the public. A detailed staff report has been prepared for committee's consideration and staff have recommended approval subject to two conditions. Firstly, that the existing gazebo and shed be removed as intended. And secondly, that a site plan agreement be entered into to implement the enhanced protection policies of the Muskoka official plan and to revegetate the shoreline buffer. I have no further comments at this time, and I would be happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sawyer. Uh, is the applicant applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? Yes, uh, they're both here. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Sorry, can you hear me now? Uh, yes, I can, sir. We need your name, address, and post of code, please. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. My name is Terry Martino. Uh, I'm an architect with Grenway's Architect and Associates, 341 Kerr Street in Oakville, L6K 3B7. We are the agent for uh, Ms. Matt Kilgan property. Uh, quickly, if I might, I'd just like to add that we've read the staff report and uh, we concur uh, with uh, its recommendations, uh, specifically that they have no concerns uh, with the requested exemptions as uh, stated on page nine, and that the addition uh, proposed is entirely in the rear yard and uh, lower than the cottage and will be screened from the water. Um, I would be happy to answer any other questions. I would like to introduce uh, it's Annette Kilgan. She's in attendance today and I understand that she's the owner of the property. She has a couple of comments to add. Thank you very much. Oh, hello. Uh, good morning. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. And just give us your name, address, and post code, please. Sure. Uh, my name is uh, Annette Gilgan. I reside at 340 Watson Avenue in Oakville, Ontario, L6J3V6. Um, I, I just wanted to introduce myself to the committee and thank you for your time this morning. Uh, I just wanted to also let you know that I uh, purchased the cottage in 2017 um, as a place for myself and my three young children and our dog to enjoy as much as possible. I would uh, very much love to retire there one day. Um, uh, if you had a chance to look through the report, there's photographs of the property and there is a photograph of um, 
the existing garage, which is visible from the street. Um, at this time, the garage is in a uh, relative state of disrepair. The foundation inside of it cracked a couple of years ago and the shingles and, and the roof are um, uh, very tired and, and uh, probably needed to be replaced a long time ago. Um, I'm a single mother, so I've been uh, plugging away at anything I can do to improve the property. And um, um, I very much would appreciate your uh, consideration in this matter today. And if you have any questions for me, I welcome them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Gilgan. Is there anyone else who wishing to speak in support of this application? Anyone in opposition? Are there questions from the members? No questions? Good. Moved by member Grogan Green, second by member Bosworth, be it resolved with application A3222 Gilgan to visit the construction of a dwelling addition is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a dwelling addition on an undersized lot. Two, to permit a lot coverage of 2,235 square feet or 8.2 of the area of the entire lot. And three, to permit a lot coverage of 2,235 square feet or 11.3% in the area within 200 feet, the high water mark. And four, to permit a hallway with exterior walls connecting an existing dwelling to an addition to be 18.6 feet in length. These variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision and are subject to the following conditions. One, that the existing gazebo and shed be removed as intended, and two, that a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for implementation of enhanced protection policies of the Muskoka official plan as necessary and revegetation of the shoreline buffer. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. And that is carried. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Have a great day. Thank you. Have a great day. And the next application is A3722. And that is Mr. Sawyer. Just a second, I'll Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A3722 in the name of Hildebrand and Bedita. The subject property is frontage on Skelton Lake and is located at 1291 Skelton Lake Road 2, unit number 16. And I would direct committee's attention to the submitted sketches starting on page 102 of today's agenda package. The purpose and effect of this application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to remove two existing sheds uh, to replace and enlarge a sun deck and to construct a dwelling addition that is intended to provide additional storage. In the waterfront residential zone, the minimum lot requirements for an existing lot of record are a lot frontage of 100 feet and a lot area of 15,000 square feet. In this case, the property has a lot frontage of 70 feet and a lot area of 13,171 square feet and a variance to the minimum lot requirements is therefore requested. Uh, the minimum front yard setback for the existing sun deck is in this case 40 feet, although the existing sun deck is located 25.3 feet from the high water mark, and the proposed sun deck addition is set back marginally further at 25.5 feet. The size of the addition, which involves a 77 square foot area increase, is not permitted at the setback, and an exemption from the front yard setback requirement is therefore requested. In the waterfront residential zone, the minimum interior side yard setback is 15 feet. In this case, the dwelling addition is to be set back 5.5 feet from the westerly side lot line, and the sun deck addition is to be set back 12 feet. 
Uh, please note that although the proposed dwelling setback is noted correctly in the public notice and in the variance summary table in the staff report, due, a, due to a typographical error, it is incorrectly listed in the analysis section. Uh, to be clear, the proposed dwelling addition setback is 5.5 feet and a variance of 9.5 feet is requested. Uh, notice of this public hearing was circulated 11 days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act and four comments have been received to date. Um, the Township's Public Works Department, Emergency Service Department and Development Services Division have all submitted comments advising that they do not have any concerns. A submission was also received from the owner of the property to the west. This is the abutting property towards which the exemptions um, for the reduced side yard setback um, would be applicable um, and it is um, so the the submission reads as follows uh, so the the submission is actually written to the applicant um, and it reads uh, hi Richard I understand that your current application will reduce your side yard setback to me but that the new shed will only be five feet six inches wide as discussed, I recommend you modify your variance request to include a more standard eight foot wide shed. I appreciate that this would reduce your side yard setback to me further, but given the grade differential, uh, natural area, and the fact that I have a storage shed between you and my main dwelling provides plenty of separation. Let me know if this email is sufficient support for the proposed modification for the variance. And uh, that is, uh actually hold on one second <clears throat> and not working just trying to connect to uh the folder um, one minute please Hi, sorry about that. Um, I'm just, uh, I didn't have the name of the of the neighbor um, written down here and uh, just having some technical difficulties connecting to the actual letter. So I just wanted to, um, I'm going to follow up with with the name of the, uh, the neighbor that submitted that comment, but um, staff have prepared a detailed planning report for committee's consideration and have recommended approval subject to a condition requiring the owner to enter into a site plan agreement to require plantings in the front yard area, along with securities. And I have no further comments at this time, but I would be happy to answer any questions from the committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sawyer. Is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? All right, thank you very much. Bring them in, please, Alex. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Tracy. And how are you this morning? I'm well. How are you doing? Oh, not too bad. 
Well, I'm hoping my internet is, is just as good as the township as I'm a couple blocks away. So uh, thank you very much. My name is Tracy Owen from the Drawing Board Architectural Design, and I am the agent for the owners. My address is 6 Duke Street, Port Carling, Ontario, P0B1J0. Uh, thank you, Mr. Soya, for reviewing the details of the application. As mentioned, the owners are wishing to rebuild their existing deck and rectify uh, a non-compliant shed that is on the lot line uh, next to Mr. Malinsky, if I'm saying Malinin, Malinonsky, I'm not quite sure how to say that, <laughs> who is the adjacent neighbor. Um, the pre-owners have previously purchased the original short road allowance to enable the possibility of this larger, slightly larger deck. Uh, we realize the lot is undersized, uh, but the cottage does remain a modest size even with the storage addition. Uh, the resultant lot coverage would be 5.7% of the permitted 8% on, on uh, Skeleton Lake. Uh, of course, as mentioned, we do have a letter of support from that adjacent neighbor uh, who actually uh, suggested the slight increase on our original proposal for the uh, storage addition. Um, Mr. Hildebrand uh, is, I believe, on the Zoom call today, so should you have any questions for the owner, we'd be happy to answer that. Thank you for, the for your time, and I'm happy to answer any additional questions you may have. Thank you very much. And uh, we have somebody else wishing to speak on this. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, I'm Joanne Bedita. I'm just um, it, it's uh, my husband Richard Hildebrand and myself that are applying, but but Tracy. Um, summarized everything perfectly and I don't have any anything else to add unless there are any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, we need your uh, your mailing address and postal code, please. Yes, uh, 688 Balliol Street, B-A-L-L-I-O-L -L -L Street in Toronto, Ontario, M4S1E7. Thank you very much. And is there anyone else wishing to speak in support or opposition to this application? No? Other questions from the members? No questions? Moved by Member Quinn, second by Member Creaser, be it resolved that application A20, sorry, A3722, Hildebrand Padea, to permit the reconstruction and enlargement of existing sun deck and to permit the construction of a dwelling addition is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit an enlargement of an existing sun deck and a dwelling on an undersized lot. Two, to permit a sun deck to be set back 25.5 feet from the high water mark. Three, to permit a sun deck enlargement to be set back 12 feet from the western interior side lot line. Four, to permit a, a dwelling addition to be set back 5.5 feet from the westerly interior side lot line. These variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision and are subject to the following conditions. One, that shed number one be removed as intended. Two, that a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for to require plantings. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. And that is carried. Very good. Okay, and the next one is uh, A4022, and that's Ms. Walker. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variant application A-40-22 in the name of Rio Pell. The subject property is known municipally as 1869 Mortimer's Point Road, Unit 8. I direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 122 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to construct a two-story dwelling addition with an attached garage on the lower uh, level and a living space on the upper level. Relief is requested from section 4.1.3 being the maximum height requirement of 35 feet for a dwelling. The resultant dwelling is to be 38 feet in height and the variance requested is three feet. 
Notice of this public hearing was circulated 12 days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act and three comments have been received. Comments have been received from Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician, Douglas Holland, the Township's Fire Prevention Officer, and Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official. These comments were circulated to committee prior to today's meeting and can be read in full at the request of committee. I prepared a detailed planning report for committee's consideration and have no objection subject to the recommended condition. If committee is considering approval, staff recommend the following condition. That a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into for the retention of vegetation. I have no further comments, but I'm happy to assist committee with any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Parker. Is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? And I see Mr. Davidson is here. Yes, good morning, uh, committee members and planning staff. Uh, my name is Robert Davison. I work with the Coning Group out of Port Carling. Our address is 3 Armstrong Point Road, um, postal code of P0B1J0. Uh, my email address is robert at theconinggroup.com. And I'm acting as agent's, uh, agent for the REAP House. Um, I concur with everything that Ms. Uh, Walker has said. Uh, I'm here to answer any additional questions if, if needed. Hey, thank you very much. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support or opposition to this application? No? Okay, thank you. Are there questions from the members? Yes, Mr. Bosomworth. Uh, just a general comment. I, this indeed is a minor variance and I see no issue with it. Um, the addition is along the lake shore and does make a very large uh, total uh, built form. Uh, and I just encourage the owners to maintain the uh, tree coverage and not uh, strip out too many branches if you want to improve the review. Um, that's all. Okay, hey, thank you. Anyone else? I'll read the resolution. Move by member Bosomworth, second by member Grogan Green, be it resolved that application A4022 reopel to permit the construction of a two-story dwelling addition is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a dwelling to be 38 feet in height. This variance is granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision and is subject to the following condition. One, that a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into for retention of vegetation. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Nan is carried. And the next application is A4422, Graham, and that is Ms. Bonker. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-42-22 in the name of Graham. The subject property is known municipally as 1490 Judd Haven Road, East Unit 5. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 142 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to demolish an existing boathouse and dock and to construct a new boathouse and dock. Relief is requested from section 4.1.7 and 4.1.7.12a, being the maximum permitted cumulative dock width requirement on a category one lake. The maximum permitted cumulative dock width is 25% of the lot frontage, which in this case is 44.5 feet. The proposed dock will have a cumulative width of 57 feet and the requested variance is 12.5 feet. Notice of this public hearing was circulated 12 days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act and three comments have been received. Comments have been received from Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician, Douglas Holland, the Township's Fire Prevention Officer, and Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official. And these comments were circulated to committee prior to today's meeting and can be read at full in the request, at the request of committee. Um, staff have prepared a detailed planning report for committee's consideration, have no objections. I have no further comments, but I'm happy to assist with any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is the owner or applicant's agent here wish to speak on this? Good 
Yes, Chief go ahead. Committee. Sorry. Yes. Um, Emily Thaler, Marie Poyer Planning and Associates, 44A King William Street, Huntsville, Ontario, P1H1G3. Um, I represent the, um, the owner of the property, Mr. Uh, Mr. Graham. Uh, the purpose of the application is to seek approval um, to demolish an existing legal non-complying dock um, and single-story boathouse and to construct a slightly larger um, dock and boathouse in just a slightly amended um, location on the, on the property. The existing dock is considered uh, legal non-complying for, uh, for two reasons. First being the reduced side yard setback um, of about 14.9 feet. Um, with the boathouse at about 19.4 uh, feet. This, uh, the second um, being the cumulative dock width of approximately 65 feet as per the township's measurement. The proposed dock and boathouse um, will improve upon both of these non-compliances. The side yard setback will be improved to 18.5 feet to the dock and approximately 22.8 feet to the boathouse. Uh, and the cumulative width um, will be decreased to about 57 feet being an improvement of over eight feet less than the existing structure. Um, the minor variance is required due to the slight change in location of the structure, which largely encapsulates the existing envelope, but moves the majority of the structure um, more central to the lot. Otherwise the increased size of the dock is permitted um, as of right by the zoning bylaw. Um, the proposed dock is single story, or sorry, the proposed boathouse is single story. Um, conforms with the maximum height and projection provisions of the bylaw and does not offend um, the lot coverage, which remains under the maximum permitted 10%. It's our opinion that the proposal satisfies the four tests of a minor variance, um, is in character with the area and um, represents good planning. We kindly request that you consider the approval for the application recommended before you today, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Thank you very much. And is there, uh, the owner would like to, to say a word? Yes, hello, good, good morning, everybody. I'm Martin Graham, my address is uh, um, 81455 Front Street East in Toronto, uh, and it's M5E0A7. Thank you very much for the consideration. I think Emily's laid it out quite well. Um, the, the existing boathouse is incredibly small, um, and this will really enhance the, the use uh, for the family of the lake. So I thank you for the consideration. Basically, I'm here to answer any questions you may have. All right, thank you very much. Is there anyone else here who to speak in support or opposition? No. Okay, are there questions from the members? Yes, Mr. Bosomworth. Chair, sure. staff has pointed out that um, the, uh, the new dock area is uh, quite significantly larger than the existing dock area. Uh, and it could be used for lounging, which is against one of our bylaws. Uh, personally, I would like to see the size of the square footage of the dock reduced. I think the, probably the most uh, logical way is to take at least the half circle off of it. Uh, that might bring it in close into compliance. Uh, but that, that it's a very large area compared to what there is existing. Grandfathering, my understanding, is allowed um, if you are rebuilding in exactly the same footprint. So this one is not, uh, the width isn't technically uh, grandfathered, it's my understanding. So that would be my thoughts and I'd be interested in what the other committee members are thinking about that. And any thoughts from the uh, committee? Yes. Uh, my only question is actually related to the plan of the boathouse. Um, I, I was having trouble understanding the different elevations and, and windows, um, the size of the garage doors, that kind of thing. I, I, I found that like it looked almost like things had been whited off the plan. I, I felt like what I was looking at that the township planners had in terms of renderings were slightly different than maybe what the plan, the um, planner had. I, ju I just sort of want clarification as to what's going on inside of the boathouse. And I, I actually agree with uh, member Bosomworth as well about the size of the dock. It is an unusual sort of shape. Um, be very difficult for boats to be um, tied up there. That's the first thing I noticed. But I did find the uh, drawing a bit confusing. 
Okay. Um, would the planner like to answer that? Through you, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, I mean, I, I can't speak to um, particularly what you're what you're seeing as the whited out portions. I just um, I might need some clarification on that. Um, and um, Mr. Martin or Mr. Graham, you can jump in at any time. I mean, the the boathouse is designed for two um, two boats to be docked on the inside of it. So um, the the design of the dock would be you know for you would be able to park boats there, but I don't know that that's the intent. I think there's lots of room on the inside of the boathouse. Um, as for the the whited out portions, I guess I just require a bit more clarification before I can speak to that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Member Quinn, you had a question or comment? Yeah, um, the, um, it looks like, it looks like the, you know, from the high water mark on one side that they're only proposing to put these docks out 43 feet and 37 on the other um, when usually as a matter of uh, right, they can go out close to 66 feet and maybe less if it's a narrow body water. Um, so I personally, if, if, it, if it's 43 feet on one side and 37 on the other, um, I don't have a problem with the size of the dock. Okay. Anyone else want to comment on that? What are your thoughts, um, Member Creaser? Although I, I uh, see the uh, what Member Bosomworth is saying, I, I also sort of agree with uh, Member Quinn. I don't have a huge problem, although the half circle is obviously for swimming or lounging. So if that is not the intent of our bylaw, then maybe it should be reduced. I, I have two mindsets here. I'm not really sure where to go. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sharp, did you want to chime in there? Just one second then. Thank you, uh, Chair Edwards. Um, I'm seeing that perhaps there may be uh, a, a, a bit of uncertainty among the uh, committee with respect to um, particulars uh, with respect to the redevelopment over, over, of over with docks um, in our zoning bylaw. So I would just um, maybe clarify one point that we had indicated in our report uh, with respect to the existing dock uh, provisions exist in the bylaw that would allow uh, that dock to be expanded within the existing width envelope over a width of 44.5 feet out into the water 66 feet from the high water mark at a side yard setback of at least 15 feet. Um, and we had taken quite a close look at that and analyzed it very closely and, and what that would result in it is a much larger dock than what's actually proposed. And those provisions in the zoning bylaw are deemed to conform with the official plan. Um, so we felt it difficult given some of the uh, improvements that are being made, particularly in regard to the side yard setback um, to object to the proposal. So I thought I would just uh, clarify staff um, uh, considerations in regard to the proposal. Thank you. And I have a question for Mr. Sharp. If we allow this, can a future owner expand out to the 66 feet and that, or should there be something put on it? There's no future expansion because that would be a large area if they went up 66 feet, a future owner. Recording in progress. Huh? Yeah. Uh, through you, Chair Edwards. 
Um, that's an excellent question. And I think uh, in this particular instance, if committee were to approve the variance, um, I think it would be approved as per uh, the plan attached to the notice of decision. Uh, so looking forward into the future, um, anyone looking at uh, the application would review that plan against um, the building permit that, 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 that will be submitted in order to submit the doc or to permit the dock and would ensure that, um, that the plans associated with that building permit uh, coincide with what uh, committee has approved. I'm not sure I'm I'm seeing uh, Chair Edwards that I may be confusing you. <laughs> I guess what I'm asking is once this is approved with that with a future owner, then then could say they had the right to go up 66 feet, unless it's it's uh, something is in there uh, that says it's it's on title that it cannot go out any farther. Is that not correct? I think, I think Thank you, Chair Edwards. I think there is um, the possibility that if this were to be approved, that a future owner could then expand the dock uh, as of right in accordance with uh, the township zoning bylaw. Um, and keep in mind that addition would, would need to comply with all of the township's um, zoning bylaw requirements. Unfortunately, through this process, um, the minor variance process grants one-time relief to the township's comprehensive zoning bylaw. It's not like a site-specific bylaw that runs with the land and can be used to impose restrictions on the property. So it may be difficult uh, to prevent um, development um, that otherwise complies uh, fully with the township's comprehensive zoning bylaw in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ah. Oh, Thank you very much, Mr. Sharp. Okay, are there any other questions from the, the members or any other thoughts? <coughs> Excuse me. Moved by member Creaser, second by member Quinn, be it resolved that application A4222 Graham to permit the construction of a new dock is hereby here approved with the following variance has been granted to permit a cumulative dock width of 57 feet. This variance is granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. That's carried. Thank you, Chair Committee. And the next application is A4322 Duke, and that's Ms. Crowder. Thank you, and good morning, Chair Edwards and members of the committee. Sorry about that. Let me start over. Thank you, and good morning, Chair Edwards and members of the committee. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A4322 in the name of Duke. No civic address has been assigned to the subject lands. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plans on pages 183 and 184 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is as follows. To reconstruct and expand an existing picnic shelter enclosed with walls and to recognize an as-built dock. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance of this meeting 
and three submissions have been received to date. Comments have been received from Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician, Douglas Holland, the Township's Fire Prevention Officer, and Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official, all stating that they have no objection to the application. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objection to the application. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. You were muted, Mr. Chair. Sorry, thank you very much, Ms. Crowder. And I see Ms. Poirier's in. Good morning, Chair Edwards. It's Marie Poirier from Marie Poirier Planning and Associates, 44A King William Street in Huntsville. Um, thank you for allowing us to uh, speak this morning and thank you to staff for preparing the report. Staff, I think have detailed the report uh, to uh, seek your approval. Um, we concur and I have nothing to add. Uh, it's a very comprehensive report and I'm here to answer any questions should you have any, Mr. Chair. Thank you very kindly. Thank you. Is there anyone else here wishes to speak in support or opposition? Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, other questions from the members? No questions? Okay. Moved by Member Grogan Green, second by Member Bosenberg. Be it resolved with an application A4322 Duke to remit the reconstruction and enlargement of a, a closed picnic shelter and to recognize an as built dock is hereby approved with the following and variances being granted. One, to permit an enclosed picnic shelter to be set back 18 feet at the closest point from the front lot line. Two, to permit an enclosed picnic shelter to be 279 square feet in floor area. Three, to permit a dock constructed parallel to the shore to be 43 feet in width. And four, to permit a dock to not abut the shoreline over its entire width. And five, to permit a dock to project 34 feet at the furthest point from the high water mark. These variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of the decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? And that's carried. Okay, and the next application is A4422 Grady, and that is Ms. Crowder's. Just one second. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A4422 in the name of Grady. The subject lands are known municipally as 1083 Hurling Point Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 235 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is as follows. To demolish an existing dwelling and sun deck and construct a new two-story dwelling with an associated sun deck and stairs, a detached garage, and a two-story sleeping cabin. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 10 days in advance of this meeting and 10 submissions have been received to date. The following comments were received and have been circulated to committee prior to today's meeting. Comments have been received from Tim Sopko, the township's public works technician, stating that a portion of the building appears to be within both the floodplain and the flood fringe elevations. This is contradictory to section 3.1 of the provincial policy statement. If approved, this application should be subject to appropriate flood proofing measures to the satisfaction of the township chief building official. Comments have been received from Douglas Holland, the township's fire prevention officer, stating no objection to the application. Comments have also been received from Nick Snyder, the township chief building official, stating no objection to the application. A letter of objection has been received from Elliot Dyer, area property owner, stating that they are opposed to the application as the property appears to be overbuilt and that significant site alteration and tree removal have occurred on the property already. 
The letter further explains that bylaws are in place for a reason and should be adhered to. A second letter of objection was received from David and Marlene Scullati, area property owners, expressing particular concerns regarding lot coverage increases and height increases, believing the proposed increases to be over 10% of what is permitted in the bylaw. They also expressed concerns for the extension of the sun deck, stating that this proposed release is solely to create more recreational space, not because of topography constraints. This letter concludes that these variances are not minor and that the bylaw numbers are put in place by experts with much public input and should be adhered to whenever possible. A third letter of objection was received from Robert and Janice Collins, area property owners, stating that they are opposed to the application as the Moon River is overly saturated with large buildings that can house multiple people and are being rented out for short-term vacationers. This letter further lists concerns for negative environmental impacts from too many boats on the river and concerns that this approval will open the door for other owners to request similar variances. A fourth letter of objection was received from Bill Micklethwaite and Kathy Dory, area property owners, stating the following concerns. That not one but four variances have been requested on what is in their opinion an already overbuilt lot that tree cutting that has occurred and that will be further required for the proposed development, the level of accommodations proposed and the capacity for septic to accommodate the number of bedrooms, that the proposed garage is also an attempt to add more accommodation and is not in fact to be storage only, that the proposed front yard setback uh, relief for the sun deck will further hinder vegetation and the potential for replanting, the letter concludes that the lot coverage request and the front yard setback request for the sun deck be denied and that the accessory building height request only be allowed after a guarantee that the proposed garage will not contain accommodation. The letter further concludes that verification be received that the septic system capacity be confirmed and will not pose any environmental risk to water quality. The following comments were received over this past weekend. A fifth letter of objection was received from Heather Britton, area property owner, stating concerns regarding ineffective notice circulation, ex excess density, unnecessary variance requests, and septic servicing. A sixth letter of objection was received from Bruno and Ann Pulowski, stating concerns regarding the notification process, the size of existing and proposed development, further loss of trees and animal habitat, noise and light pollution, and the short-term rental potential of the property to accommodate large groups of people. Finally, a seventh letter of objection was received from Linda Petri, area property owner, whom has a number of questions regarding the proposal and requests that a decision on the application be deferred until an on-site investigation be completed. Given the tight turnaround from when these comments were received to the meeting, they have only been briefly summarized. I am happy to read any of these comments in full at the request of committee. Staff, sorry, staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have recommended that the proposed, or sorry, that the requested variance from the minimum front yard setback for the requirement for a sun deck be denied. Staff can confirm that circulations were made in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act and that individuals who expressed concerns regarding circulation were either circulated or outside of the circulation radius. Staff have recommended that the other variances for lot coverage and accessory building height be approved, subject to the following conditions, that a site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for the retention of vegetation and planting. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Browder. And I see we have an agent here, Mr. Good morning, uh, members of the committee. My name is Savas Baratis of Plan Muskoka, PO Box 5384, Huntsville, Ontario, P1H 2K7. I'm here this morning representing the Grady's as uh, their agent and uh, as a professional planner. I have read the staff report prepared um, by my staff, and um, I do agree with the recommendation um, in pertaining to the, uh, the lot coverage uh, request and the uh, height requests on the garage. Um, 
I don't necessarily agree with um, fully with the recommendation to deny the deck, and uh, I do have an alternative that I would like to discuss with the with the committee. But first, would like to say that I, I honestly didn't re realize that there was this many letters of objection coming. I, I don't I don't see them attached to their agenda, and I was never sent them. So um, I was a little bit surprised to hear that there were so many members of the of the public that were out out crying on this. Um, I want to make it clear that what we're asking for today is a 0.8 percent increase in law coverage. The um, the property uh, that would translate to 297 square feet of uh, additional coverage over the entire property. Um, what what you end up with is, uh, you know, to me, an indiscernible difference in law coverage. 20% is actually a fairly small number. It is in com compliance or conformity with the official plan's permission to uh, look for increases of up to one tenth of the permitted the coverage um, that is um, permitted on the property. In this case, being on the Moon River, uh, it is only permitted to have 8% law coverage. And this therefore is at 8.8%. Um, there is There was tree cutting um, during the construction of the dwelling that you see in the photographs that are in the staff report. Uh, I think Mr. Grady can probably attest to this, but I don't think there's any in intention to use this as a short-term rental as some of the the, um, the neighbors have, have objected to uh, the potential for that. Um, what we're just seeing basically is just a redevelopment of the subject lands and, 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 and often when redevelopment occurs, there is like a short time of, um, you know, turnaround when uh, site disturbance is sort of at its greatest uh, sort of moment in time, I guess you could say. Uh, as you know, there's a construction materials being brought in the property and it's not until final landscaping is, is completed where a lot of these disturbed areas are, are revegetated. And, um, and also with staff's recommendation for site plan approval to be a part of this application that would seek to revegetate um, areas of the shoreline that are currently open, um, you can see that there are gonna be some improvements made to this, to this property when all is said and done. And I feel like if, if that were the case and we could see into the future, this, this site probably wouldn't look as, as much in disarray as uh, some of the neighbors are probably seeing right now as it's currently under construction, but um, that it's uh, unfortunately the timing of this application is such that that is occurring right now. So um, I, I, like I say, I do agree with staff's recommendation to approve the additional law coverage and, um, and, the, and the, the garage height that's being proposed is in line with what the township is um, heading towards as the, the regular minimum height, which is 22 feet versus 20 feet, which is the current bylaw requirement. So um, in terms of the deck, um, there was basically a proposal to extend, to construct a lower portion, um, like a lower level of the deck that's being proposed off the front of the building. This lower portion based on the angle of the building towards the shoreline has like a corner of it that encroaches into the 50 foot requirement. Um, I've spoken to, to Mr. Grady and we've sort of um, looked at the comments made by staff and made by the um, building department in terms of flood elevations and flood proofing. And um, we were seeking maybe to see what the committee thought about a, a proposal to reduce the, uh, the encroachment that's being proposed from 44 feet to 47 feet, which would essentially bring the deck out of that floodplain area and dramatically reduce the amount of um, uh, encroachment that's being proposed to just a simply three feet of encroachment. And the three feet, again, is not the entire deck moving forward three feet. It just would be that one corner that encroaches towards the water. Uh, Mr. Grady um, has told me that they do have aging parents and this lower deck would allow them to enjoy the shoreline without having to go down multiple steps to get down to the actual shoreline itself to do so. Um, and um, that's the purpose basically behind this lower deck portion of the, uh, the proposal. So um, you know, I hope that that would be seen sort of somewhat of a compromise between the proposal that's been put in front of the committee here today and what uh, staff has recommended in the report, which is to deny that section of the or that part of the proposal. So I'd be happy to hear what the, what the committee has to say um, on this matter. And um, if you have any questions for myself or anything that I can't answer, which you can see Mr. Grady is available for questions as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I see Mr. Grady is here. Sir, would you like to say anything? Yes, thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, committee members. Um, 
Uh, first off, uh, it's uh, 96 uh, Broadleaf Crescent, Ancaster, Ontario, L9G3R8. Um, I want to thank you for the the opportunity to to talk to you. I think after hearing you know the letters um, from the neighbors and things, the the intent is not uh, for this rental. We've been vacationing um, in Muskoka for over the past eight years with our family. Uh, made the decision to to purchase and set roots within the in the community. And the and the purpose of the the development is is really a multi generational cottage for our family. Um, we have kids, uh, three of them under the age of 13. Um, anticipation of obviously as our family grows is to to make this, um, you know, a really multi generational uh, place for us. And um, as uh, Savas has, has mentioned too, we've got elderly parents, great grandparents. So the intent of the the deck um, uh, and the way that we've designed it is to really kind of support that um you know usage of of it so um you know it just opens any questions the community may have um and again thank you for your time okay thank you very much is there anyone else here wishes to speak in support or opposition to this application we have one um, in opposition who's just been on the panel okay we'll bring them in please Hello. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Yes, uh, it's Kathy Droy, a uh, neighbor at 1049 Hurling Point Road. Um, I guess we have, uh, well, we your, your, your postal code and your address. Um, P1049 Hurling Point Road in Bella, P0C1A0. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is, I guess, just a further question or concern to our submission was the, <laughs> the shoreline development. There has already been a significant change to the shoreline development with stone stairs and big boulders at the waterfront now and removal of trees within the 50 foot limit. So now the proponent is talking about adding large decking right down to the water. How can that, you know, it <laughs> impact the, the shoreline development, the natural shoreline, which has already been altered hugely? Okay. Have we lost you or are you still there? No, I'm still here. Okay. Okay, anything else you would like to say? No, no that's fine. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in support or opposition to this application? We do have one more person who could provide. Okay, you can bring them in, please. Yes, sir, go ahead. Okay, you're able to speak. We need your name, address, and postal code, please. Are you talking to me? Yeah. Okay, uh, hi. Yes, um, I'm a neighbor. My name is Muriel Hutchinson, and I own 1078 Hurling Point Road, and my family owns 1082 and 1086 right beside us, and this is right opposite this new construction. Um, uh, do we have your... My concern... Just one second, we have your your, your mailing address and uh, post code, so we can send my you mailing your... address. My mailing address is. Uh, do you want like a Bala address? No, where do we get Sixty eight Riverview Heights, Etobicoke. Right. M nine P two Nancy five. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, so um, mainly my concerns were um, with this documentation that just went out, we didn't get it till yesterday. So we really haven't had a lot of time to look at it. 
I've seen the construction going on right now, and I'm not really understanding that it looked like two buildings were going up facing the lake, which I believe they have two lots on the lake. And then originally, um, that was a Hutchinson property originally from my great grandfather. So then when the road got put in, they had to buy the, the back lot to have access to the road. So now that they're planning to put up this big cottage, it looks like two buildings, two different roofs, and then they have a sort of sun deck adjoining room in the middle of it. And it's pretty big. I, I believe the building plans are 3,100 square feet. And now they're proposing also a cabin on that property with two stories. And I don't know if it's planning kitchen facilities and everything else, but I think it's really no way size. overbuilt. No, no size. And there's no size specific about what they are actually building. And then they're also proposing a garage two story that wants to have also sleeping quarters in it and everything else, which is going to be almost back to the road. And so all of a sudden these people have like a 10 bedroom place and it, it's like a, a campground that I'm going to be living opposite. And I think it's using the property like okay. commercial. Okay. And I I'm very concerned with the septic and um, it's going to block all the view to the lake, all those three buildings and two stories high, like uh, over two stories high. And so I just object to it because we're not Lake Muskoka, we are Moon River and we don't have this kind of a commercial facility on a residential street. And it's never been allowed before. We had our main cottage burned down. We have two lots here. And we were really restricted on everything we were allowed extra on this property. And we've had it since 1916. And so I don't know why there's some extra favoritism seeming to go on. And with this, I just needed a little more clarified now if there's something newly changed that they're allowed to sort of put up a building, two buildings with two different roofs and have some kind of lower adjoining part. And then they even have a walkout basement already that can walk out to the lake. And now they're still allowed two more full buildings with living quarters in them too. And I, I'm just not understanding uh, what is really allowed on those lots and, you know, like how much damage this can do to all the environment, the water and the properties, because all of their properties now are, um, Convert it to our property and flooding our property and trees are falling down with the swampiness of how much flooding is coming over from that side of the street. Okay, well, so you. I don't support this and I we need more environmental information and we need more information on the size of these extra Just dwellings that they're trying to put up. It's not being disclosed to us. Okay, well, thank you very much for your uh, concerns. Um, it, it looks like um, they have 8%. They're asking for 0.8, which is allowed. And that uh, their, their uh, building design is is up to them as long as they're, they're within their uh, percentage. But I'll um, ask, is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support or opposition to this? Okay, there's no other questions from the members. Yes, Mr. Um, I have some. I, I'd like to know a little bit more about the uh, the garage that's being built. Frankly, I'd like to see the floor plans for both floors. Uh, it looks like a very fancy building for a garage. Uh, I'm just a little concerned that it might morph into uh, the ever expanding family and become a living space sometime in the distant future. Um, I know we can put some restrictions on that, but it would help if we could just see the floor plans. Okay. And uh, Member Creaser, you had your hand up. Yes, I have a similar concern to Member Mosenworth. Um, no plans for either the sleeping cabin or the garage as a two-story. Um, and yes, we could put a restriction on the second floor of the garage like we've done before. And we, I accept that they are trying to pull back the uh, the deck. Um, I'm concerned we're not fully a proposal, and maybe we should defer. Um, 
and allow them to uh, rejig the deck and any other and maybe bring back the plans, bring in the plans to uh, show us what is planned for those two buildings. Uh, I have no problem with the overage on coverage. It's pretty normal for our application process. So it's really a concern of what the staff has said and the fact that there's omissions within the actual submission itself. Okay, thank you. That's all. Member, Member Grogan Green? Uh, yes. Uh, can you hear me now every time? Yes, I, I can, yeah. Okay. Um, so I have a concern about the, the, the sun deck, uh, full stop. I mean, uh, you want another, now you're saying four feet into the 50 feet uh, buffer, and it, you just can't have that, in my opinion, in light of what has gone on on this site in the past, the recent past. I also want clarification on what the boardwalk is and what the rules are on uh, these big giant stone steps that are so wide across the property. I mean, I, I personally would love to have this. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'd love to, to, to do some things down on my waterfront, but I can't because there are rules that prevent me from doing so. So I don't do it. And I just don't understand a lot of this application. And I particularly don't like that uh, none of the neighbors uh, were, were approached. And if they were approached properly, we wouldn't be sitting here. And on top of it, you know, uh, if you had, uh, Mr. Uh, Grady had pre presented to the neighbors properly, perhaps they would have understand, understood what this site clearing was all about and the tree uh, cutting was all about. Because many of us in Muskoka are getting very tired of this. You know, I, I, at this committee so many times over and on my site visits, I see properties that have been cleared. And then I'm told, don't worry about it. There's going to be a site plan and we're gonna revegetate. And, and like one of the applicant or one of the opponents, I understand I had a fire at my cottage too and it was wiped out. And in 30 years, in, you know, in 15 years time, you can have some white pines grow very well in Muskoka. So I understand renaturalization. But when you clear cut like that, present your planting plans first. You know, it's just too upsetting for someone. And I completely understand that a river is different than a lake and that the shorelines along a river need to be protected because it's, it's a place where the fish are spawning and you know, waterfowl are potentially living. So the opposition that you are feeling from your neighbors, I understand that. And therefore I completely agree that this thing should be deferred. And I'm very grateful to the planning committee for at least recognizing that this debt is not a minor variance because I think most of what has occurred is not minor. Okay, and that's my you. opinion. Okay, so I, I would go, go along with a deferral and a, and a change. And I, I really thank the neighbors because I know personally, I've opposed things myself and it is extremely stressful and uh, I'm, I'm grateful for all of you for standing up and saying something. I think it's a great community that you clearly have along there. So thank you. Okay. Are there any other comments from the uh, committee? I'm hearing that, uh, yes, Member Bosenberg. Yeah, I would just say, I, I think this should be deferred. Um, one of the things I would like to uh, hear when it comes back is uh, was the, uh, the uh, tree bylaw fully followed? Um, it, you know, it sounds like there's been a lot of tree removal on the site. I think we should just get confirmation from staff that uh, the tree by bylaw was in fact followed. Okay, so I'm hearing that it should be deferred in that. Um, I will let Mr. Grady answer that because I think it should be deferred at this time. Uh, I'm sorry to the other people. You've had your say and it's the uh, committee now. But Mr. Grady? 
Yeah, just uh, thanks. Thank you, the committee and the opinions. I, I just want to just stress that there is no Ill intent to tr to do something with uh, in the property that's not meant to happen. And I'm you know sad to hear that our neighbors are are feeling that way. We are trying to redevelop it in in a way that is um, beneficial to the community. Um, we do want to set routes there. Um, you know, everything when it comes to the building permits and everything else have been followed, uh, hence the, the variance um, request for this because of what we want to do with the property. So, um, you know, and I, and I hear what the members are saying regarding the, the deck and if there's opposition against that. Again, I, I think we were just looking at trying to make this the best um, kind of multi-generational property for our family. And so if the deck is something that is 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 again not something we will we will go back. We want to work with the committee on this and and just want to do with what's in uh, what's in the bylaws and the and the granted variances that can be done. So, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So I think we will actually defer this. Um, we would like. Uh, I heard that there was water being diverted. I'd like that checked out if we could. And that uh, that's one thing. It looks like the deck will have to come off and uh, we would like drawings uh, and that. Is there anything else that the committee are, are looking for? I believe that covers it. So we will defer this. Yeah, the tree, pre, tree preservation has been complied with. Yeah. Okay, thank you on that as well. Uh, yes, member Grogan Green. We can't hear you. I would like some clarification on what's allowed on the shoreline in terms of a boardwalk and these big stone steps. Yeah, that would be uh, looked at as well because, uh, like I say, the, the fifty foot uh, and that fifty foot buffer is not being uh, adhered to by the looks of it. So we'll have that checked out, and uh, I'll have uh, Ms. Crowder come back on just one second. Thank you, Chair Edwards. Um, I can speak a little bit to uh, the concerns for the shoreline development and bylaw has been contacted um, to, to investigate this property. So we'll be able to uh, report back on that. Thank you very much, Ms. Browder. Okay, so on, on to our next one. And we are at A, 5622 CDFP Holdings. And that is Mr. Sawyer. Thank you, Chair Edwards. So the next application to be heard is minor variance application A5622 in the name of CDFP Holdings Incorporated, uh, operating under the name of Muskoka Boat Gallery, located at 2 Lee Valley Drive here in Port Carling. Uh, I would direct committee's attention to the submitted sketches starting on page 258 of today's agenda package. And the purpose and effect of this application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to construct a one-story, 4,000 square foot addition to an existing building that is used as a marina, uh, where a lot line abuts a street. The minimum permitted setback is 25 feet. In this case, the rear lot line abuts Muskoka Road 118 West, known within the urban center of Port Carling as Medora Street. And the proposed addition is to be set back 12 feet from this rear lot line. Uh, and a variance of 13 feet is therefore requested. Uh, similarly, in the community light industrial zone, the minimum rear yard setback is also 25 feet and therefore an exemption from this uh, minimum rear yard setback requirement is also requested. Uh, notice this public hearing was circulated 13 days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act and four comments have been received to date. Uh, the township building and that public works department and emergency services department have advised they have no concerns. Uh, the development services division has provided comments advising they have no objection to the application and the spatial separation of buildings and other requirements of part three of the building code will be considered at the time a building permit is applied for. 
and the District of Muskoka's Engineering and Public Works Department has advised that the width of the um, Muskoka Road 118 West road allowance is quite wide in this location uh, as a result of it originally having been a provincial highway and also the stretch of road that abuts the subject property, um, the road alignment is quite straight. So therefore uh, sight lines will, are not anticipated to be affected. Uh, for this reason, um, for these reasons uh, rather, um, the district does not have any concerns with the requested reduced setback. And staff have prepared a detailed planning report for committee's consideration and have recommended approval. I have no, um, further comments at this time, but would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Soya. And we have the agent in. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Davidson. Uh, good morning, uh, committee members and uh, staff members. I've actually been told that we're not acting as agents on this uh, minor variance, that the uh, the property owners are, are looking to speak on the, their behalf. Okay. So then we'll bring the property owner in now. Hello. There you go. Good. Go ahead, Mr. Poole. Yes. Um, my name is Chris Poole. Um, my address is 46 Alpine Lake Road, Trent Lakes. Um, postal code is K0M1A0. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Chairman Edwards and the members of the committee for considering this uh, expansion to our business. I am the owner of the Tule Valley uh, business location, uh, business as Muskoka Boat Gallery. Um, we do believe that this expansion will not only bring aesthetic value to the area, but also uh, provides us the opportunity for additional employment uh, to run our business and expand our business um, on the service side of uh, of what we do here at the boat gallery and I am here to answer any questions if uh, if so need be. Thank you again. Okay, thank you very much. And is there anyone wishing to speak in support of this application? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? Other uh, questions from the members? Seeing none. Moved by Member Bosenworth, a second by Member Quinn, be it resolved that application A5622 CDFP Holdings Inc. to bring it to construction of a one story addition to an existing building is hereby approved with the following variance being granted. One, to permit a dwelling addition to be set back 12 feet from the westerly lot line, which abut Medora Street, and two, to permit a dwelling addition to be set back 12 feet from the rear lot line. These variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in, yes. Member Green. Can't hear you. Okay, nope. Okay, no. Yeah, yes. now we can. Uh, this is sort of unrelated, uh, uh, Chris Poole, so don't, don't panic. Um, I uh, support this application. But my question is um, more related to safety of this road. Um, you know, if, if you have uh, what they call the rear elevation, in my mind, it's the front elevation because I'm often driving on 118, but, um, you know, there's usually a light in the summer at the IG, uh, at Foodland. Um, but in the winter that, that that is turned off and i just find that between sort of the shell station and 
town, it gets really dangerous. And I know it's a district road, but what are the rules on the number of lights we can have in Port Carling? Because this is a total aside conversation, but it's it's getting really, really dangerous, I, I think. Um, and I don't know, like if you're putting people so close to the street, uh, it's hard when you're coming around that bend to see uh, much going on. What are the what are the rules? Well, this is what they're 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 here for is to to ask for an exemption from the twenty five foot setback, I believe. No, I I know we're approving that, but my point is just in general, like what what do we do about one eighteen? Like it's just too fast and busy through town. It's it's out of uh, control at times, and I just wondered what the long term plan is. Well, if we're talking traffic rather than uh, the application, really we. It's, it's not the platform for it, I yeah, believe. Yeah, well, when we approve something like this, to me, there should be some mention of safety. Well, um, Mr. Soy, would you like to answer that? Just a second. I, uh, okay. Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so just to, uh, in, in this case, um, seeing that it is a district road, it is the district of Muskoka that is responsible for ensuring that safety is, um, will be maintained on that road. So they were, um, because it, they, um, the minor variances that are, have a district interest are circulated to the district. And uh, like, for example, in this case, and um, we've, I've spoken with the district staff and, in terms of this application, they, they certainly did not um, uh, have any concerns with regards to safety, uh, given um, that the road allowance is very wide in that location and uh, it's a straight stretch right there. Um, and okay. with regards to any other safety concerns, that would um, be a discussion to, for, to have with them. Um, with the uh, district and typically when there's a development proposal um, that uh, that comes up that is going to be adding additional um, traffic to the district road the district would be in a position to ask for a traffic study uh, to be done to to determine if an additional um, if additional signals are required um, this is not the case really in this is here the district has not asked for any type of study and they're they're okay with it so hopefully okay. that provides a little bit of clarity thank you yes thanks thank you mr Sawyer. okay so back to the resolution and that um yeah i've, I've read it all those in favor that's carried Okay, and I don't believe there's anything else. So the next resolution is moved by Member Creaser, set by Member Hogan Green. We have resolved the meeting adjourned at 11.09. All those in favor? And that is carried. We'll see everyone in October. Yes, good luck, Rob. Thanks.